Welcome everyone. Um, good morning and a warm welcome to our annual Australia Day event in Maryborough. It would have been warmer yesterday. I'm, I'm very, very pleased. I think we're all pleased that we're celebrating it today and not yesterday. It's just a rather bit too warm. Um, to introduce myself for those who don't know me, uh, Chris Meadows Taylor, I'm the councillor uh, out at uh, Paddy's Ranges Ward and uh, was elected mayor. It's 10 years since I've last been mayor, so um, uh, it's significant for me. Now, can I acknowledge uh, some dignitaries in attendance? Uh, first of all, um, I want to welcome my colleagues, Councillor Grace Lavella, Councillor Elizabeth Long and Councillor Wayne Sproul. Uh, we also have now two, two other Maryborough Ward councillors are not here because they're busy doing things in uh, Australia Day things in other parts of our shire. Councillor Jeff uh, Lovett is uh, going to Daisy Hill. Councillor Jared Murphy is in Talbot. Could I also acknowledge our CEO who is here um, take a low profile, <laughs> not on stage, but uh, good to have uh, I see uh, Lucy Roppy here. And of course, to acknowledge our very special guest speaker, someone who knows that it does not need an introduction, but it's uh, very, very fine to have Louise Staley, MP, the member for Ripon, here, and we'll be hearing from Louise shortly. I think this is. Sounds she's got about 25 events today to go to. I think this is about a fourth already, and there's another four to go. So Louise has been busy, but Louise, great to have you. It is a very warm welcome. Um, and in addition to the two councillors, very good ward councillors, are doing other things. Can I also say we've had apologies from the federal member for Mali, Dr. Anne Webster, MP. Uh, as you can imagine, the size of that electorate. Uh, and probably has yeah, got some major challenges as how she covered that. Gail Tierney, MP, the member for Western Victoria, and Jala Fulton, MP, the member for Western Victoria. Uh, to start the official proceedings, I'd like to acknowledge that we're meeting on the country of the Dato Wurrung. We acknowledge their forebears are the traditional owners of the land we are on and their long history of ceremonies of celebration, initiation, and renewal. We acknowledge their living culture and their unique role in the life of the region. And can I add that as a council we are committed to reconciliation. We are working towards a more positive and inclusive community in partnership with our traditional owners and all our First Nation residents. With this in the forefront of our minds, we gather today to reflect on the meaning of Australia Day. And can I say how great it is to see that uh, not only have we got so many people here, but that we've got similar events right across the show. As I mentioned before, uh, I, uh, Talbot and um, Daisy Hill, where our two Maryborough councillors are, but also uh, in, in Carrisbrook, where I'll be headed to after this, uh, at Denali and Bialaba, and uh, we've got Councillor Elizabeth Long, who will have to leave us because she's got to head, she's the ward councillor for Finn, got to head to the lawyer, so that she's here briefly with us, which, which, which is great. Um, can, I, uh, can I also say that, uh, of course, that we, our event is slightly different from normal because, as uh, Alicia said before, it is COVID safe and we've had to work with the restrictions that we have, but um, we're still going to make it very special uh, nonetheless. Unfortunately, we don't have a citizenship ceremony, which I always think is very special we have on Australia Day, but that wasn't to be. But we will be announcing the Australia Day uh, award winners. I think that's always very exciting. That's a real drum, drum roll event to, uh, to, to announce those, which we'll be doing a bit later on. So before we stand to the raising of the flag of the national anthem, can I just I want to leave you with one thought. Now, we, I, I mentioned about reconciliation. We acknowledge the recent change in our national anthem one, to one and three as one step towards reconciliation. But I think in a world which we face so many challenges, ethnic and religious persecution, totalitarian political regimes, and I, I think the misery of uh, refugees in Syria and elsewhere, which restrict all those people being free, the misery of famine, wars, the division, 
and, and let alone those countries that are facing such a massive scourge with COVID. Can I suggest today that we all remember that we're not only one, which we now acknowledge, but we are three in a very special way. And I just would like us to reflect on that and also what we can give back to our society and community, which has given us so much. Now, if I can ask you please to be outstanding and we'll, play, uh, we'll uh, face our faith poll as the Central Gold Hills District Bill Guides and the First Maribyrnia Scouts Group raise the Australian faith. Immediately following that, I'll ask if you can remain standing. We will sing the national anthem. We have the new words uh, for you, so please feel free to join in. Uh, the singing of the national anthem will be led by Nicole Formal, representing the Mary Barra Theatre Company. So please do feel joy uh, free to join in when we start, but for our flag raising now, please. so much Nicole for that beautiful uh, rendition and leading us in the National Anthem. Can I ask everyone please to be seated? Now uh, it's my pleasure now to invite our guest speaker, uh, Louise Staley MP, the member for Ripon to address us and thank Louise once again for fitting us into a very, very tight schedule that she has today but we're thrilled to have Louise with us and to uh, to address us on Australia Day. Thank you, Louise. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and, and uh, regular attendees of this uh, event would know that I make this one a priority every year. It's actually my favourite, although don't tell the other seven LGAs that cover Ripon. I, I look out and you're a bit like the cricket, aren't you, in your separate bays, and uh, I'll come to that, I suppose, in a moment. So uh, I recognise the Mayor, Chris Meadows-Taylor, uh, the other councillors of Central Goldfields, uh, and Lucy Roffey, the CEO, and of course, ladies and gentlemen of Central Goldfields. It is really wonderful to see you all here today, uh, and I hope, though, that next year we'll be able to be back 
to normal with no registration, uh, no restrictions because of COVID. Australia Day is Australia's National Day and it's rightly a day we celebrate for the achievements we as a people have made. But rightly, it is also a day in which we reflect soberly and with great respect for everyone on the areas upon which we need to do better, particularly regarding Indigenous Australians. This year, when I sat down to write these words, I was struck by two cataclysmic events that have happened since we last met together on Australia Day. And the first, of course, I've already mentioned. COVID-19 has killed over 2 million people worldwide, including 820 in Victoria. And the second, the storming of the US Capitol on 6th of January should make all of us who are committed to democracy and stability and the freedom that our Mayor spoke about sit up and examine how we can better protect and promote our democracy. While we're not yet out of the woods with the COVID pandemic's health effects, the goal of widespread vaccination is on the horizon. I'm going to get the jab as soon as I'm eligible and I urge everybody else to do so too. I want to pay tribute to the health professionals across our region and across Victoria and Australia for the outstanding work they have done to keep us safe over the pandemic. They were turning up to do their job when they didn't know if the PPE was working. They, they were working shift upon shift, uh, often without being able to see their families for weeks. And one of the results of their great dedication and expertise is that Australia has one of the lowest death rates per infection in the world. And that is testament to our health professionals and I pay tribute to them. Thank you. COVID-19 will permanently change us. And some of those effects will be welcome. For example, rural and regional communities have in many cases been trying unsuccessfully for decades to increase their populations. But being locked up in suburban Melbourne and working from home has opened many Melburnians' eyes to the advantages and possibilities of living in the country. I know personally, every time I did a Zoom, I made sure to have the fabulous view that I'm lucky to have at home in the frame. And people always ask me whether it was a fake background and I said, no, no, that's what I see all day. But some of the effects of COVID are not as welcome. There is much evidence that already disadvantaged children fell much further behind from remote learning than other students. And here in Ripon, we have many disadvantaged children, well above the state average. More needs to be done to help these kids get back on track. It's also true that as a community, we have become, I think, less tolerant of others' views, and in too many cases, too quick to hell abuse, whether it's at the teenage shop assistant who asks us to wear a mask, or the person online we disagree with. I've certainly seen the level of intolerance and aggression increase on my social media pages. And that's what leads me to the storming of the US Capitol. Above everything else, when I saw those images, to me, as a legislator, I, I saw that democracy is fragile. Over the past couple of years, we've had the Victorian Parliament shut down a few times from protesters in the gallery. But we've never had anything like people taking over the floor of the Parliament, and I hope we never do. Our democracy 
our freedom, like other mature democracies, requires the smooth and uncontroversial transfer of power from elections. It requires the upholding of the law, and it requires general acceptance by everyone that politicians hold office, we hold power, to govern within constitutional and institutional limits. And I worry that we are losing that overwhelming and shared belief that democracy as a thing in itself matters. Therefore, I hope that one of the changes that comes from this year of the pandemic is that more Victorians engage with politics, perhaps for the first time, or re-engage. And there's lots of ways to do that, to pause before rattling off yet another personally abusive tweet. By educating ourselves and our families about how parliament, politicians, and our democracy works. And by thinking about joining political parties, any political party that you believe in. Because the more people, the broader we have in our political parties, the broader they will be able to accept and put out what people want rather than being captured by narrow divisions. Like the Mayor, I think it's, it's a terrible shame that we don't have anybody undertaking a, citizen ceremony, a citizenship ceremony here today. It's, it's my favourite part of uh, Australia Day celebrations. And ironically, the group that are most likely to know about our democracy are those who are our newest citizens. And perhaps we should all learn from them in their appreciation of what we have here as special and worth fighting for. As always, when I attend these ceremonies, I come away re-energised to be part of a community based on civic participation, founded on the rule of law and democratic traditions, and building one of the most vibrant multicultural societies history has ever seen. Happy Australia Day, everybody. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much for that, Louise. Um, very thoughtful words. Um, and and the, the thing I think that resonated most with me we both regret we haven't got a citizenship ceremony today, that if we did, and for those who are to become citizens, they realise how special what we have is, and it's really worth preserving, contributing to and fighting for, because we should never undervalue what we have and how special that is. Let's move on now. Now, it's time for me to introduce another speaker and someone I have personally, uh, association with Talbot, great pleasure to introduce, and that is our 2020 Young Citizen of the Year, Katie Greenwood-Smith. I'm going to invite Katie to speak. Um, Katie's going to share her reflections with us of what it's meant to be selected as our 2020 Young Citizen of the Year and her experiences throughout the year. Um, Cody was recognised with that award for her uh, dedicated contribution to Talbot, her home community, which I can certainly testify to, but also to Mirabra, which I know well. And because I'm uh, Facebook friends with Narelle, who's sitting, her mum, who's sitting right opposite, I see her brother there too, next to her, I happen to know that 2020 was also a special year for Katie because a picture appeared in the Facebook page with, with, uh, with Katie wearing some very, very uh, special looking graduation robes. So she'll explain more about it. So obviously 2020 was a special year uh, for Katie in many ways, but let's hear from Katie now. I'd ask Katie to come forward and share some thoughts with us. Thank you. Good morning everyone. For those that don't know me, my name is Cody and I was extremely humbled to be recognised as Young Citizen of the Year in 2020. And what a year it was. Personally, 2020 was not the year I had planned or expected, as I'm sure it wasn't for anyone here. 
It was a challenging year, as it challenged us all personally, professionally, as well as the community. For me, it started off with the recognition of young citizen, a few relaxing days in the summer sun, community events such as the Tolba Pool Sausage Sizzle, developing my skills with the Leading Excellence Meribara program, and plans for an amazing year of social events and clinical placements. I was in the midst of completing my fifth and final year at University in Melbourne when the coronavirus began to take hold. As the world began to shut down around me, I made the split decision to come home and be with my family, not knowing details of how long this lockdown would go for. I spent the next six months of my pra particularly practical course interacting online with clinicians and other students, not knowing if, when or if at all I would ever graduate. My plans for overseas amazing placements and interstate placements were crushed as I moved back into, to into lockdown 2.0 and I was forced to improvise, thinking outside the box with learning and skills practice on online Zoom calls. At home, like many families in our local and wider communities, I faced difficult decisions of completing what are normally daily simple tasks like going to the supermarket or attending work. The uncertainty surrounding the coronavirus and its potential to alter our lifestyle and change the norm of day-to-day -day life had a massive impact on our entire country and community. In times of challenges, and crisis, Australians are well known to draw on each other for support, but the unknown fear of COVID was set to test and undermine this. For me, it was the potential unknown impact, impact that my simple actions could have on the health of multiple family and friends who fell under the label of immunocompromised, as well as the insecurity of the blank timeline to when this madness would end. But with all the angst and hardship 2020 <coughs> has brought with it, it has also had some rays of sun amongst the clouds. We saw our country and our community come together and be closer than ever before. It has made us take a step back and appreciate what we have, how much we value our local treasures, such as markets, shops, and playgrounds, how much we enjoy going to our local restaurants and grabbing a coffee with a friend, or even a simple of how much joy someone's smile can bring to your day. It has shown us just how precious a simple act of human contact is and the impact this has on our day-to-day -day lives. 2020 has also given us the gift of time, more time to spend with our immediate loved ones and to check in more often with others. It has given us the time to weed the garden or finish those home projects we've never got to. And for me, it has given us the time to welcome additional family members, including our fair friends, and acknowledge the great value of technology and software, such as FaceTime, with the important role that has played in keeping us connected. So whilst we all sit back and ponder the year that was, I implore you not to dwell on the negatives, but celebrate the positives. 2021 will bring about its own challenges as we continue to find a new way forward to live in and around the presence of COVID. But now is the time to reflect and build. Build ourselves, our families and our communities to even greater heights as we find new ways to come together and support each other. This pandemic has shown us all what we're all capable of and our strength to persist, bend together, and carry on in true Aussie spirit. As this new year begins, it brings about fresh new beginnings in terms of friendships, relationships, locations, community involvements, and employment, which for me is starting my brand new dream job in the surf coast town of Torquay. And now as we move into the awards section of the ceremony today, I'd like to finish by passing on my sincere congratulations to all nominees and award winners. To be nominated for such a recognition of your outstanding efforts and devotion to our community is by itself an amazing achievement. But faced with the challenges in 2020, you have rose to the occasion, faced these trials head on, and focused your efforts on the local community's needs, and in doing so brought us together closer. Being selected for me gave me an amazing opportunity to use my small platform to bring light to the value of committees, events, and initiatives that others in our society may not have heard of and gave me the chance to continue interacting with people of all ages and walks of life, learning from their experiences and my own. So to all the nominees, award winners, and their supporters, continue your work and your learning journey. Be proud of your success and your failures. Pay respect to your past, celebrate your present, and let passion and hard, drive, hard work drive your actions in the future. Happy Australia Day, everyone.
Thanks so much for that, Cody. Um, and someone who is very, very special, and I can certainly attest to that. And I think Cody's message of 2021 is going to be a year that we can all be very excited and to be positive, as Cody said, and to look forward. And if we've got some challenges, we'll meet them head on. So thank you, Cody. You will leave big shoes to fill for your success. But uh, so I think one more round of applause for some of you. Too. And Narelle, you can be a very proud mum indeed. You won't be reasonably. Now, just before we move on to the Australia Day Awards ceremony, I have a very special announcement that uh, we didn't know when we were preparing all of this. And that is that one of our very revered, long-term residents and well-known residents has been awarded the Order, uh, the, uh, the Order of Australia Medal and that is Fred Treble. So how exciting that is. And can I say how well deserved that is? Um, I've known Fred over many, many years and uh, when I first became Mayor back oh, around about 2007, Fred was always a source of inspiration. He'd phone me up, can we have a chat about this? Is this a possibility? so much inspiration and Fred continues to be an inspiration. We met Fred just last year when we were working through some issues with the, uh, in relation to Maryborough Airport. Age has not diminished uh, uh, Fred's enthusiasm for or passion for his community. He's contributed to in so many ways uh, in the aerodrome, in arts, culture, former mayor of Maryborough. Uh, you name it, Fred's been there, so instrumental with the Wattle Festival. Um, he is a legend in his own time, and how fitting that he has been recognised with that, with that honour. OK, we'll now commence the Australia Day Awards Ceremony. Now, I acknowledge last year's winners, and you've heard from Cody, and thank them for their service as Australia Day ambassadors during the year. That role is really, really important, and uh, they put a lot of work into it. Um, the Australia Day Awards for Central Goldfields show recognise and celebrate many of the things that are so important in our community. Volunteering, where would we be without our volunteers? It's a scary thought. Our volunteers make the community we have. I sense a pride in, in who we are, where we live, and, and, and as individuals who contribute, to make our community stronger, more inclusive, a better community to be in. And a more happier, happier, safer and enjoyable place to live. And, acknowledge, and they acknowledge too that people have made a positive difference in our lives. So today we've got the opportunity to publicly acknowledge those, those people. Some of the very quiet achievers who would never put their hands up and say, look at me. They are truly unsung heroes. We have such a large army of volunteers who give of their time year after year after year in some cases. And they give their creativity, their experience and enthusiasm. And we're just incredibly grateful because without them we could not have the community we have, as I said before, so important. Now historically we normally have a community award of the year and recognise the community, uh, community events that have been very special and that our, our community groups have worked so hard to achieve. Now, because of COVID last year, that's just really not been possible. So um, we, I think we all understand that because just you know, countless events, in fact, almost all of them had to be cancelled. But we're hopeful with, that with life returning to normal during 2021, uh, our community groups will and already starting to meet again. Our events are getting back to, to normal uh, and we'll have lots and lots of great nominations for this award in 12 months time. So, our first Australia Day Award is for our 2021 Young Citizen of the Year. That's an annual award that recognises the outstanding achievements of our younger citizens and the requirements are to be under 27 years of age. Uh, 
And many of the nominees have overcome great obstacles to, to act in their role and be role models to others and make positive contributions. And I want to congratulate all the nominees. Whether you're successful or nominated or not, the fact that you contributed is all important and thank you. So, the 2021 Central Goldfield Shire Young Citizen of the Year is Caitlin Britton. Now, a bit like uh, her predecessor, Katie, uh, Katie, it's hard to know where to start because there's so many things here, here, but I'll just run through a few. Caitlin is a sports person, a role model, a leader, and ambassador for our local community. In what was a challenging year, and we know how challenging it was, Caitlin led her, her cohort of students with uh, positivity and optimism as a 2020 student leader. Not an easy task. We know how difficult it was for uh, students to work from home and uh, how difficult it was. And so it was all much harder to provide that leadership which Caitlin provided. She's an experienced public speaker, having delivered a presentation at the Law Enforcement and Public Health Conference in Edinburgh. Who, well, not many people can list that as an achievement. Wow. Uh, it did that in 19, 2019, where she shared initiatives, uh, MEC, Edinburgh Education Centre, uh, undertaken to reduce the incidence of, ge of gender violence. So how good was that and what an achievement. Uh, Caitlin also spoke at the 16 Days of Activism Vigil in, in Maryborough in 2019 and was in 2018 the Rural Youth Ambassador with the Country Education Project, really, really important partners with us in Energy Breakthrough, uh, where, where Caitlin had the opportunity to speak to the Minister uh, for Educational Issues Affecting Rural Young People. She's an active volunteer at the, at the Maryborough Football Netball Club and the Kalgani Tennis Club, and has volunteered at a range of local community events over recent years. Throughout that, Caitlin's demonstrated courage, kindness, very important thing, kindness, respect and aspiration in her daily life as a key role model to many. Well, Caitlin, how lucky we are to have you as a member of our local community. I just think that's a fantastic resume for anyone, probably twice Caitlin or three times Caitlin age would struggle to have a resume with those sorts of achievements and no doubt Caitlin will go on to so much more. So congratulations, thank you for your contribution you've made to our local community and, uh, and certainly all eyes on Caitlin for the future. So I'll now ask Caitlin to come to the stage and we're going to ask uh, Councillor Wayne Sproul to present her with a certificate and flowers. It's amazing what happens behind your back when you're not looking. You should have mirrors here to do that. Councillor, Councillor Wayne Sproul has always been a very, very, very progressive person. He doesn't, he doesn't miss an opportunity. All right, so uh, are we taking a photograph now, or are we moving on? Oh, that can go on already. No, no, no. I don't know. No, no, have we got one of you too? Yes. That's all right. I don't need to be in a photograph, believe me. All right. Yes, I'm going to say that. We're just improvising a bit here, but in any case, things have moved on. Caitlin, you see, you're a mover and shaker in ways we hadn't even predicted. So, Caitlin, come and say a few words. That would be fantastic. Well, what a privilege this is to be up here today. I really didn't expect that, but um, I thank everyone in the community that has made this possible. Um, David Sutton and the staff at Maryborough Education Centre that have given me so many opportunities. Um, my parents that have always strived for the best for me and told me never say no to an opportunity. Um, that's mum's little quote. <laughs> and I think I've lived by that. And um, I hope to continue doing things for this community. It really has a special place in my heart. Thank you, everyone. Well, what, what a special award that is. 
And thank you again, Kate, and congratulations. Well, it's the only time for now since this year's Citizen of the Year. Um, the quality of the nominees was excellent, I have to say. And I encourage everyone to think about who they nominate for uh, the award next year. It's so easy to just leave it to someone else, to know someone that really deserves an award, but not to do something about it. Please act on it. Please put in the nomination, because uh, that's the way that things happen. And uh, so I really would encourage you to do that. So we've got so many volunteers who do, do, do so many special things um, and we really, really value that. So next year we, we, we look forward to having the three events, the uh, community uh, event, our young citizen and the citizen of the year. But now let us move on to the citizen of the year. I want to thank again everyone who put in a nomination because that takes a bit of work who was nominated because they've obviously done something incredibly special for our community. But there can only be one winner, most of the time there's only one winner, and there is one winner for 2021, and I'm delighted to say the citizen of the year is Jesse Wright. Now again, Jesse is someone that uh, really just needs no introduction, another legend in his own time. He's been a member of the, uh, an SES volunteer, uh, you probably wouldn't guess this, I even got a shock, 42 years. What a contribution that is, you know, and the, and the level of contribution and leadership is just incredible. Also been an active co contributor to our local driver reviver program. Uh, as in his role in the SES, Jesse's been a first responder to countless crashes, weather events, and some of those have been very difficult, very challenging, but Jesse's always been there. And he's helped our community through uh, flood, fire, and other tragic events. He's always been there often at the expense of his family, I wonder if they ever see him at times, uh, because he's just had to drop whatever he's doing and come out. And Jesse is a wonderful example of the selflessness and professionalism of all our, our volunteers. So thank you, Jesse, for your 42 years of service and dedication to our community. Look forward for another 42 years contribution. Now I'm going to check this on what's been going on in the back. No, nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> so that's okay. I thought I'd have to check this stuff. But in any case, look, we've got, I'll now ask uh, Councillor Grace Lavella to present, uh, to present Jesse with, we haven't had yet, no, that's good, <laughs> with, with a certificate and some flowers on to mark the event. Suffered 
on many occasions, um, yeah, whether it be Christmas or birthdays or any other family event, when the pager goes off, you've just got to go. Um, but um, being a volunteer has been special to me. I've uh, learnt lots of skills. I've um, been places and had lots of training. So um, if anyone is interested in becoming an SES volunteer, just get in touch with us and um, you might end up um, gaining more skills and friends uh, like I have over the years. So once again, I thank you all and um, thanks to everyone's support. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, uh, Jesse, and uh, who cares when he did a brilliant job of the public speaking, but just keep doing the wonderful work you're doing in the community. Don't worry about public speaking, that's the easy bit of it. You just do a fantastic thing. So one more round of applause for this. Well, that brings the awards part to an end. Um, I just wanted to mention Normally, of course, we always have a very popular institution at Mirabara is the baby medallions that we have and our books for our, uh, our kids starting, um, as well as starting four year, uh, four year kinder. Now, because of COVID, we would have needed lots and lots of uh, uh, sanitizer. It would have got very, very complicated. So those are going to go out, but they're going out by post instead. So we're not going to actually present them this year, but everyone will still receive them as they have done in the past. And so congratulations to the families that have welcomed uh, uh, babies in, in, into their lives, into the community, and those uh, starting kindergarten and hopefully many happy years ahead of uh, uh, kindergarten schooling. But just before we conclude the Australia event, um, these things never happen by accident. Uh, months and really months of organisation and hard work goes into it. But I just want to acknowledge the people that have put so much work into what happens today. Uh, the community groups who prepared the, the fantastic breakfast, again, had to be a bit different because of COVID, but uh, as enjoyable as it always was and very special. So thank you there. Thank you to all those who took part in the flag raising ceremony, the National Anthem, um, and thank you to especially, uh, to, I really wanted to thank our own council staff, um, our, the staff in our, in our infrastructure group do a great job, you can see all the, the, this, uh, these little fences for COVID kind of protection and the other planning and the seating and, and the things around, again those things are the result of hard work and uh, so Thank you to all the team that, uh, that work in the infrastructure area to have uh, made that all happen for us. Uh, and especially though I wanted to thank uh, Alicia, Alicia Chadwick. Well, I keep waiting to hear the news that Alicia is going to be pinched by some world-class event, you know, we'll go for a sporting event or something, because she's so good at event organiser, organising. I think it's just my loyalty to her community and the show that we still got her. Because I reckon no one else in this planet knows as much about events as Alicia does. So Alicia, well, you're probably hiding behind the screen somewhere. Yeah, that'd be right. So a big round of applause for Alicia and all the council. So thank you, that completes it all. Thank you again to uh, Louise for coming along and, uh, and managing to stay. I think she's going to have to, you can't speak to the next place, so you mustn't do that. But, but, but uh, she's got, I think, another four, four, four places to go. But thank you all for coming. Have a great day. Uh, stay safe. Uh, stay COVID safe, importantly. But have a lot of fun and a wonderful 2021 to follow. Thank you so much.